Hi everyone, welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the videos. If you are, please consider subscribing. In today's video, we're going to go over how I set up my lay boxes for my snakes and check in on the corn snakes and how they're doing as far as um, ovulating and looking gravid. All right, let's go. To make a lay box, it's honestly quite easy. Um, we are going to start out with a container. Now, keep in mind the size of the snake that your that your uh, is producing eggs for you. Something like this, I typically use for a hog nose. It's big enough that they can get in there, they can move, they can stretch if they need to. Um, you know, if they need to wiggle around to move the eggs down so that way they can get them out easier, it's still big enough. They're not just super cramped. Now, alternatively, I use something like this for a corn snake. And again, same deal. They're still, they're a little cramped in this, but not too bad. And, but it gives them room to kind of stretch out, move around. They're not so cold up that they can't move. Now, you see on this, they, these are like humid hides. Cut a hole in the top, you know, then if flame polish the edges just so that way it's not sharp and we're done as far as the container goes now for something as big as a bull snake um, depending on your enclosure type you may end up turning the entire tub into the lay box you may end up finding something that fits inside your container that you keep your bull snake in that they can then go into that um, larger snakes you know require a little bit more um, creativity but once you have your container done again this is just a big hole in the top I have a couple holes in the side just for a little bit of ventilation these are cheap from either Lowe's or, Tar or Walmart not Lowe's, Walmart or Target. And we're just going to take, and we need sphagnum moss. Now this is just what's available at my local pet store. Now with sphagnum moss, you can buy it extremely compressed down. Doesn't hurt it one bit if it's compressed. All we need is something that will hold moisture. We, I actually don't just have sphagnum moss. I've also got in that compressed style what's known as forest moss forest moss and it's an exoterra versus um, zoomed there's no no difference as far as its purpose but it is a different type of moss. It works. It works just fine. Um, I like sphagnum moss because it, it, the way that it's made or the way that it's grown, it is um, very easy to separate out. With the forest moss, it tends to clump and stay clumped, whereas the sphagnum moss, it's very easy to fluff and spread and make fluffy and the snakes can get in there and kind of make it their own. So to do so, and then by the way, this is fairly messy. Um, this is pretty warm, almost hot water. Um, I do that primarily so that way I can immediately put this into the um, snake's enclosure and I don't have to worry about it warming up. Um, by the time I get everything done, even though it's pretty pretty warm almost hot water by the time i get it everything soaked in drained squeezed out in containers and then put in the actual enclosure they it cools off quite a bit so i don't have to worry about anything being too hot for the snake either so today i'm only doing the two larger bins for the corn snakes I used these last year and before using them this year I went and I'd already cleaned them but I cleaned them again 
uh, just in case because any I didn't want any leftover egg smells um, possibly causing issues so but what we're going to do is we're going to take the sphagnum moss and just dump it in the water and like I said this is pretty messy it's probably one of the messier processes that um, we go through as far as egg laying. We're gonna let this sit for just a couple minutes. Doesn't take long, it, its entire purpose in life is to absorb water, so it does a pretty good job of it. And also, you'll find that uh, it goes pretty far. You don't need just a ton because it does expand as time goes. All right, so now that this has been sitting for a minute, this has absorbed plenty of water. We're actually gonna wring most of the water back out. So this is damp, but not wet. And this is the reason why sphagnum moss is liked so much. This long fibrous method like this with these really soft kind of petals on it, that's why people like sphagnum moss. The for, like I said, the forest moss actually works just fine, but the, um, you see how this fluffed up really well. And that's the reason why everybody likes sphagnum moss is because it, it works so well. And it goes quite a bit further than the uh, other mosses because it doesn't clump up as, as hard. Right, so there's lay box number one. We're just going to put the lid on. I might have to grab just a little bit more moss and that's okay. Hydrating a little bit more. All right, so this is rehydrated. All right, and that's it. That's it. It is that easy making a lay box. Now, again, all this took was some nice warm water, some sphagnum moss, and containers. I'm gonna get these in with the corn snakes, and we'll see if we have eggs in the next couple weeks. I like to, once they start growing, once I know that they've uh, been paired, I like to go ahead and put the lay box in because then they can get used to it, they can make it their own, and they it, it just smells like their home where they where they want their eggs to be. All right, so I'll be right back and we're gonna put one in. So this is wild style, and she's already going to be less than enthused that I'm going to be bothering her. So we're gonna use the lid here just because I know that she'll strike, get her up, She's gonna start musking, which is okay. Easy girl. Now if I can manage to, if 
you look. Huh? Huh? Without a consist without a straight edge, it's kind of hard to see. But there are regular bumps going down her abdomen. And it's the lower third, as it as you would expect. And so she is most likely gravid. So what I'm going to do, and this is also just to kind of get her to settle down so I can put this in, is I'm going to get her into her lay box. Let her kind of figure that out. That is now hers and now she's also contained because what I want to do is I'm going to pick a corner and this lay box is actually going to take take up that corner. She can still get out, she can still stay dry if she wants. We're going to get her fresh water because she's got wood in and she's already coming out which is fine but now this box will stay warm she'll have dry she'll have her lay area and she will be when she's ready be able to lay her eggs all right everyone i'm gonna get the other corn snake we're gonna take care of her and then we'll be done all right be right back all right here we are with tess now Tess also has been being paired regularly. She was showing it more so. She may be reabsorbing or she may still have a ways to go, but See if I can get her to cooperate. Down there at the... She has... She has some semi-regular lumps, which is indicative of being gravid, but Again, she only recently shed after brumation, so I'm not putting a lot of stress on it. She's going to keep getting paired, but again, since I've already done one, one snake, I'm going to go ahead and do the other snake and go ahead and put it in a lay box. It's probably early, but that's okay. Um, all it takes is just a little bit of time to re-moisten it if it, if it need be. The key is, is letting them make it their home. At least that's my way of thinking with it. All right. And she disappears. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what we've done, please remember to subscribe. And also, consider checking out either the playlist or the video that is shown on the screen. Have a great day. Bye.